So let's take a look at it. We have two inputs. One of them are raw messages. So these are the messages we send explicitly. So these are this. So when the hello message goes in, it went there. there. Another input is from materialization of a stream, which happens just here. Materialization and messages to game events flow are merged, so they go here. And they go straight to the game area actor sync. And this is the end of the flow for now. Game area actor under the hood sends messages to actors it was provided with. So in this example, these are these actors. For for each player joining, there is a player actor ref added to the game area actor. And it sends game events via tail to all play actors. There is only one inside this flow, but it also notifies other players in other flows. Then this actor sends messages to flow, which converts game events to plain messages. And these messages are going out of the graph. Let's run the test. And as you can see, there are a few ways we have to correct. So this is one of them. Uh, also, there is no implicit keyword here. Uh, we can actually simplify this like that. And we don't need this anymore. And let's see. Because, yeah, we get player move requested as a text message, but we don't send it anywhere. So we should maybe create a function notify player player move requested And similarly, we are going to send this event to all our actors. Just like that. And here we also need to call this notify player changed. Same here with this case. Okay, and I think we should now, in our game events to message flow converter, here we have to add case uh, layer move requested direction. And for now, we're just gonna respond with direction because that's what we've been doing previously responding with the same message we received. Let's see what happens now. Okay, so uh, we expected to wait till John, but God, yes, this is what we want. We don't want welcome anymore, but a list of players currently connected to the server.
same here, here. And nice, it passes all. The hard part of creating stream is done, and now it's time for managing the player movement. So let's create a test, should register player and move it up. And we expect that when the player named John is connected, it will get message similar to the ones we had previously, but with, with a change of position. So let's edit this fragment. And now we have position together with, which is also a JSON object consisting of X and Y. And we expect that on the connection, we are instantiated in this position. So let's see how can we implement it. Currently, we have a placeholder for this functionality because there is a player move requested uh, event. So here we can parse it. And player move requested consists of player name and direction. So let's assume that direction is going to be up, down, left or right. So let's match on direction. And let's convert it to the offset. So in case of up, we are going to convert it to position of 0 and 1. And let's actually create, create a class. Okay, now that we have our offset, we need to modify existing player and change its position. So let's grab a player. And call it maybe old player with actor. Player. And let's uh, replace existing player with the one with the new one with updated position. So there is player with same name but with different position. Oh, and we need to add position to the player too. Like this. And here we're gonna use old player position plus offset. And we also need to define this fu function plus on the position. Okay. 
something like this and we also need to provide it with actor and let's notify players changed we don't need this anymore we are just notifying that the some of the players have changed We don't need this anymore. But here we need to add here we need to add a format for position. Here, let's maybe rename it to direction and now the player requires also position this is the block responsible for creating a new player so the initial position for the player should be 0 0 okay let's run the test and see what happens Maybe let's uh, comment these tests for a moment. And these two. Okay, so expected it was John position, but I got a big letter here. And let's see what. And it passes, awesome. Let's modify our preset. And we can also add one more thing which is actually moving the place so we expect that whenever we send up it should respond with appropriate message with increased y value let's see if that passes awesome it passes that's great we need to modify this here is an interesting case because uh, we actually shouldn't be instantiating two players in the same position but for now we're just gonna assume that it is what we want okay does this test pass now And let's fix this test too. And this too. We don't actually need this test anymore. And all the tests pass nicely. Now that we have all the features implemented, we can easily extract all the non-test classes to separate files and bootstrap everything into one server. So let's extract this service. Let's 
let's extract this actor to another class. And I think we can get this event inside an actor. All right. Let's see if the dependencies are correct here. They are. So let's run the test to see if everything works. Yes, and all the tests passed. So now we can create server which bootstraps the service and exposes connection to the outside world. Let's take a look at documentation. Refactor it. And we don't need root because it is defined in our service. But we need to pass system, actor system and materializer to the service because it is also needed here by bint and handle and also by HTTP. So in our game service, we need to extract actor system and actor materializer to our parameter. Just like that. And I think it's going to work now. Let's run the test to make sure. We need to create a new Let's run the test to make sure everything still works. And indeed it does. So let's run our server. And it is, as you can see, it is exposed on localhost on port 8080. So let's test it. Player name Andrew. It is opened and we can move player around. 